let's look at artificial intelligence in whole context of human history let's keep in mind that we are talking about human history not the whole history not the evolution of entire uh, species which happened so if we take a look at this this is the chart of evolution wherein you actually start with you know uh, earth then ocean ocean to kind of like this and then slowly slowly things are evolving today so it's like bacteria uh, precursor to plants then slowly uh, these species fish amphibians reptiles birds mammals and then us okay that's the intelligence so our intelligence you know the way it has evolved it it has a very recent origin here if we kind of like convert the whole history into 24 hours maybe we came just at last minute or something so it's very recent past uh 100000 200 something so now what we are looking is we are just looking at this part not everything else because that's just been evolution of a such a species where the biological tools are kind of like learning the photosynthesis food blah 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 now let's just focus on human okay and where is intelligence and artificial intelligence coming into picture so around 300000 years ago okay that's when emergence of homo sapiens happen okay so the sapien in sapien stands for smart okay so look at the confidence of species we have named our species as smart species so we kind of like you know first uh, you know bipedal so from however from apes we kind of like evolved this was the emergence of homo sapiens okay now slowly okay until this to next so around 70000 years ago so 3 300000 years to 70000 years ago until then the one thing evolved which is our brain okay brain which is source of all our intelligence okay take a look at this intelligence and ai contains this intelligence word and also contains a keyword which is artificial we are trying to simulate our intelligence artificially and our brain our intelligence reached to what it is now so around 70 70000 years ago that's when our brain is kind of like indistinguishable from that okay so that was that then a revolution came which was this first industrial revolution now let's take a look at from 70000 years ago to 12000 years ago okay from 70000 to 12000 years ago we were mostly hunters so hunter air gatherers okay and what was most in demand in that time was strength so either physical strength or a communication so when we mean communication it's not public communication you know like what i'm doing right now but more like relationship building so you either have strength as a individual or you have strength in numbers so anyone with better eq would also be very valued someone who can bring other people together someone who can make them work together so in hunter or gatherer times that was valuable since 12000 years agriculture evolution started so agriculture so 12000 years when our entire thing moved from hunter gatherer to agriculture we are still having value to our strength and communication the most amazing thing happened when first industrial revolution happened where it is not our strength which is valuable but strength of the machines we create so that is what industrial revolution brought us it kind of like removed the limiter on our strength physical strength we build machines and make this so then came age of dreamers you see the first thing our ancestors would have thought when they saw birds would have been you know i wonder if i can fly and then in time 
it was figured out and we started flying similarly when we saw intelligence when we saw what our human mind is capable of that's when fiction becomes wild you know fiction science fiction is actually rooted in science whether it is isaac asimov whether it is arthur c clarke who or whether it is uh, books like you know finding not finding nemo captain nemo <laughs> so all these things they kind of like sow seeds of things which are yet to come but it starts the thought process in that way if we take a look at 2001 space odyssey here the way space travel was you know portrayed there we are not there yet but we are definitely reaching there if we see book by isaac asimov and books on robotics we are not there yet but we are definitely reaching there if we go in terminator not the homicidal killer robot but just thinking about the robots which are capable of speech we definitely have tools which can do that so all the science fiction books movies comics they all sowed the seed of intelligence in a classic movie a movie which you will be able to uh, recall is matrix so very popular movie which people think is a action movie but in reality it is a deeply philosophical movie which makes you think what what is different from someone which is a ai versus intelligence what is real i mean to quote morpheus what is real how do you define real if what you see and hear then real is simply electrical impulses interpreted by your brain that was an eye opener thing so then there is things like are we in simulation such philosophical questions are happening so whether it is matrix or whether it is movie like inception so in inception people are shown in a dream in matrix people are shown in a simulation now it doesn't matter whether you know someone is you know manipulating us behind the scenes it's it does, so take a example of video game right in video game we know we are in a game we still play it well so even if this life was a simulation why wouldn't we do it the best way we can but these questions such questions they are the most important things because this is what started what eventually started in 1950s so science fiction is just a glimpse and this glimpse made actual ai possible so in 1950s turing test which we talked about in the first lecture this is when a, a person who was also a fan of science fiction whose thinking was open to the things which were not even possible and this is what made ai possible so the reason we are talking about this is not to just look at the past from nostalgic ways but to say that someone who thought about ai in 1950s you can also think right now when you are learning you can also have the same wide eyed mindset and look at future and maybe the questions you ask can create future so maybe there might be a course in future which says alan turing in 1990s asked this question and xyz in 2050 2100 asked this question and that is what made the thing which we see today so how amazing will that be